Tip number one, prepare for your map with research. The key here is to follow the rules, then tell the story. In other words, find examples of what real world places look like. What do they have in common? Those are your rules. Then find what is different. You can take from nature or historical documentaries or even fantasy shows. Tip number two, consider the five room dungeon and multiple points of entry. When building a map, you'll want to consider all the necessities of a five room dungeon. You can find a whole video I did about that in the description and in the cards, but here's the gist of it. You want to include these five rooms. The entrance, which typically has some sort of guardian. The puzzle or role-playing challenge. The setback, aka the trick or something that impedes the heroes. The boss fighting room. And of course, the reward. How will you incorporate those in this map? Consider also that you should give players three ways to enter any secret area. If you give them only one entrance, you still need to give them multiple ways to find that one entrance or to get that quest line going. This ensures that your players actually stumble upon it and you don't waste your time building a map they never use. Tip number three, create prefabs in Dungeon Draft to speed up your map making process. This is a highly underrated tool that Dungeon Draft has. If you love the way you set up a table, you can quickly save it as a prefab so that you can use it again and again. This will help you make more maps faster. We recommend spending an hour or so just making up a selection of prefabs for things like weapon racks, tables, table settings, barrels and shelves, wagons and carts. Try to come up with different scenarios for your prefabs. A dungeon table might have something completely different from a dinner table in Strahd's Manor. Or maybe not. These prefabs will help you create great maps very quickly in the future. Tip number four, modify the angles of textures and walls to add more interest. Diagonal pieces can help draw the eye to important parts of the map. Use this to your advantage to draw the eye to a suspicious stairwell or a hidden door. Use patterns and textures to guide the eye down hallways and to create intrigue in your piece. Be careful of too many lines though, as that can make the piece look too busy and detract from where you want your players to actually look. Tip number five, add texture to the dungeon draft brushes for more intrigue. Select a texture and set it to 10% opacity to add a layer of texture to the basics of dungeon draft, like the grass. Use a circular motion when drawing these for a more blended effect. This can also be used to add height and hills to your map, making it feel more like a real place instead of a flat surface. Add height with cliffs. To make a realistic cliff face, start with a lighter cliff edge. As you move up, it'll get lighter, and as you move down, it will get darker and closer together. This will give the map an illusion of height. Take it to the next step by adding shadows. Remember to reduce the scale on lower objects and increase the scale for higher objects. You can also add depth by using blur effects on lower or higher perspectives. Tip number seven, use Dungeon Draft's Blast Open tool to change or redraw the ground and add some texture. This is particularly useful for those caves, but be careful of overuse of this tool. It can sometimes cause some lag, especially if you have a really big map. Tip number eight, tell a story with your objects. Once you have the basics down, let the objects on the map tell the story. By adding things like a bucket in the well, or small marks on the floor by that sliding bookshelf, you let the map tell the story for you. Consider things like how the space was used. For instance, how did the occupants of this cell eat and what did they do with their waste? Tip number nine, add depth and atmosphere with shadows and light. We touched on this when talking about cliffs, but adding shadow around the walls and objects can also give the map more depth. You can play with the light in the same way and add even more atmosphere by tinting the light different colors. An orange light can signify warmth, red can signify something demonic or evil, blue can signify something magical. Use color to your advantage to create the perfect scene. 
I hope you liked these tips, and if you did, please go support the map maker, Birdie Maps. You can find him on Patreon, which I'll link in the description. Also, he and his map making friend are running a Kickstarter that ends on February 23rd. For about $11, you can get 30 maps with unique stories. So go back to them now. Again, that link will be in the description. If you'd like to see this full map time lapse, Birdie Maps will be uploading it to his YouTube in the future. So once I have that link, I will drop it for you in the description. But until then, you might also like this other video collab that we did in the past, or this other video, which is on the five room dungeon technique I mentioned here. See you soon.